Hello everyone, my name is Edward, and today I present you the second episode in the Automotive History series. In this series I'm going to cover the most funny, interesting and juicy stories of automotive history. But without further ado, let's get started. I want you to go back to the lobby, get some snacks, get back, sit back, relax and enjoy. As I'm about to tell you the story of the origins of the Woody, what the Woody is and what has surf culture got to do with it. Now, before I even start mentioning history, we need to look at what a Woody is. Generally, a Woody, or 90% of the time, a Woody is a station wagon. So we need to look at what a station wagon is before we even start with the Woody. The station wagon, or estate car, got its name from a time when, and I'm not kidding, the vehicle was used to transport people from a country estate to a train station. Wagon. Station. Station wagon. It's as simple as that. And I honestly wouldn't come up with an explanation like this myself. And I know a lot of stories. Seems like you learn something every day. But anywho, that still doesn't explain why these cars were made out of wood. It was the early days of motoring and furniture manufacturers were looking for a little side hustle. And so they decided to construct these station wagons by buying a chassis and then just remove the body and replace it with wood. And then selling it to resorts or whatever kind of institution that needed cars that could carry a lot of people and a lot of luggage. What I'm trying to say is station wagons were in the early days of motoring, and I'm talking about the 1910s, the 1920s and 1930s, used for commercial purposes instead for personal use. These woodies, or well, station wagons, were sold alongside pickup trucks and vans. And there was a high chance that your local handyman drove a station wagon instead of the family next door. This all changed during the 1940s and the 1950s. In the middle of the 1940s, right after the Second World War, materials were scarce. And uh, just as I explained in my very first video, manufacturers were looking for different ways to replace steel. In this case, they used wood. Now, not only station wagons were built out of wood, also sedans and coupes were made partially out of wood. Dang it, how many times I'm planning to say wood again? I'm getting tired of this. Let's shake things up. You want to hear a joke? Here we go. Knock knock. Who's there? Wood. Wood who? Knock on wood. Ha <laughs> ha, got him. Moving on. Okay, to make things clear, the war is over, shortage of everything, predominantly steel, and car manufacturers were looking for a cheap alternative. Now, granted, wood is cheap to come by, but it is quite expensive to maintain. Cars tended to squeak and wood needed constant repair, refinishing and attention. If you neglected maintenance, it could lead to moisture damage, discoloration and rot, the wood version of rust. And then there was also safety. Remember, if you were in an accident, you get splinters everywhere. And we all know how much a splinter of your thumb can hurt like hell. And then there was a fire hazard that wood brought along. Especially if you were hit in a bad spot, your car could turn into a cozy and warm fireplace. Talking about Hot Wheels, teehee. No, but seriously, as soon as the resources became available again, Car manufacturers switched to steel instead of wood for their station wagons. Plymouth was one of the first manufacturers to do this in 1950. Buick was one of the last doing it in 1953. Okay, so now you know everything about Woody's and the origins of it. But what's the deal with surf culture? Because when you think about the surf culture, you think about big waves, surfboards, everything that is related to Hawaii and Tiki and the Woody station wagon. Well, imagine this. You are a teenager in Southern California in the early 1960s and every summer break you want to hit the beach and catch those big waves with all your friends and then you needed something big to haul all your friends and their surfboards. And back then big vans for personal use weren't really around yet. So the only thing that you had that was big and spacious and not a truck was a station wagon. Now there were two ways to get a station wagon back in those days. The first way was to sneak out of the house and borrow your parents' station wagon, which was a Mercury Colony Park, or go to your Uncle Jim's scrapyard and try to find something very cheap. In this case, a dumped 1950s Woody station wagon. These station wagons went away for the lowest price because back in the 1950s everybody wanted to dump their Woody station wagons in favor of all steel station wagons. Because they were a pain in the butt to maintain, just as I explained earlier. And you can bet that the youth of the early 1960s didn't give a crap about the cars. They only made sure that they kept on running, but they didn't care about the wood at all. So they rattled along, squeaking along the beach, finding the next big wave. 
Look at this image for instance. This is a beach during the 1960s somewhere in Southern California. And although this picture is not helping me at all by not showing a single woody in sight, you can see that people turned up with station wagons, vans and just anything that they could get their hands on just to transport their friends and uh, surfboards. And so gradually the woody became another symbol of surf culture. There were even songs written about surf culture and surf cars in particular. Like the very first line of text in the song Surf City by Jan and Dean and the song Boogie Woody made by the Beach Boys. Gotta love surf music. Mm. But now back to the Woodies. How did it survive through the decades after the 1950s if it only was used and abused by surfing dudes? Well, despite the big disadvantages of using real wood, the woody in itself never really went away. They were replaced by woodies featuring real 100% genuine fake wood. That's right, real wood was getting replaced already in the 1950s with fake plastics that looked like wood. The first manufacturers to do that were Ford and Mercury in 1955. The real fake wood now found on all steel station wagons remained popular in the decades after the 1950s. Ford used it on their station wagons such as the Country Squire. Chrysler applied wood on their brand new minivans in the 1980s, such as the Town & Country, and GM used to apply their wood to the cars well into the mid-90s. And a good example is the Buick Roadmaster Estate. But the use of station wagons died down in favor of SUVs during the 1990s. But please don't be worried, they received a wood treatment as well. Look at this Jeep for instance. Still though, by the mid-2000s, woodies were getting rarer, rarer and rarer. And you could consider yourself lucky if you could find the application of fake wood on your car as an option. The last car that looked like a woody was the 2008 Ford Flex. That car had horizontal grooves on the side that evoked the looks of wood. But as of today, finding a car with simulated wood on the sides is impossible. And although you cannot buy a woody station wagon anymore, the woody will always be in the mind of the beach bums and will always remain a big part of the surf culture. And with that, I want to end this episode. Thank you for listening and remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. And uh, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. It's where I post cars that I found in the wild on the street, uh, along with some interesting facts or a story, something like that. None of that promotional or irrelevant bullshit. So once again, thank you and see you in the next video.